This video will teach you how to start Minecraft and be ready to play like a pro in six easy steps. So stick around, I'm Kyle Lemon. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Kyle Lemon, back at it with another Minecraft tutorial. And today, we're going to be showing you how to start Minecraft in six easy steps, and then you'll be ready to play just like the pros. Are you guys ready? I'm ready. Let's get this started. So the very first thing you're going to see when you open up Minecraft is this title scene. Single player, multiplayer, and Minecraft realms, as well as options and quick game. Single player will allow you to go into this world folder and select whichever world you're currently playing. If you're currently playing no world, go ahead and select create new world. You can change the game mode to survival, hardcore, creative, and survival. You can set your survival mode to whichever difficulty you want, peaceful, easy, normal, or hard. Keep in mind, on Peaceful there are no monsters, so you will not get the drops from them that you need to play the complete game. In the new update in 1.16, you can easily add data packs onto your Minecraft world if that's something you like. And uh, data packs just change the game a little bit to have it be more user friendly or maybe have mobs drop some heads. You can go check that out online. I'll have a link to some of the data packs down in the description below if you're interested in that. When you go to create a new world, it'll be automatically set to survival and the difficulty will automatically be on normal. Go ahead and create new world and it will take a while for the world to completely generate. So just sit back, relax, and get excited to play some Minecraft. All right, everyone, so this is the world that we have landed in. It doesn't look too bad of a start. So let's get on with our six steps. So you've just spawned in your new world. Pay close attention to where you spawn. The block you spawn on is actually where the compass will always point until you get a lodestone. To start with, the very first thing you need to do is punch down a tree. Now that's very stereotypical. Everyone pretty much knows that about Minecraft, but the reason that you're punching down a tree is because obviously you need wood and you need wood for tools. Once your tree is down, you can leave the leaves up and they will begin to fall automatically and leave drops like sticks or saplings, or even apples on the ground. Go ahead, open your inventory by pressing E. And as you can see, this book here is the crafting book. You can set it to showing all or showing what you can craft at the moment. So we're gonna show it to craftable because that's the easiest way to get what you need right away. And what we need right away is oak planks. Go ahead and put all the wood into the crafting table and get out your oak planks. Now you see there are more recipes that have popped up. So that was step one, was cutting down the tree. Step two, now that you've got your wood, go ahead and make a crafting table and place it on the ground, wherever you want. Go ahead and right click the cat crafting table and we're gonna craft a couple of sticks. Once you have the sticks, you're gonna have enough wooden sticks to craft a wooden pickaxe you do not need any other wooden tools. Go ahead and get your wooden pickaxe first. That is the only wooden tool you will need. Step number two, find somewhere with lots of stone. Now this is pretty steep for a beginner. So try and find somewhere else. And if you can't find somewhere else, don't fret. There's stone under every block of dirt. You might have to dig a little bit, but eventually you will get to a stone layer, just like this. Go ahead and break a bunch of stone you will need at least 32 pieces of stone and 32 pieces is a half of a stack blocks in minecraft only stack up to 64 in one space so you can see there are 13 oak planks there will only ever be 64 oak planks in one space and that goes for pretty much everything there are some ex exceptions like ender pearls only stack in 16 the same with eggs and snowballs with this wooden pickaxe, you are able to get up to 57 blocks of cobblestone by only mining stone. If you mine any other blocks, you will uh, use up the durability of the pickaxe and instead it'll get you less stone. So if you mine only stone with the wooden pickaxe and you use it up completely, it will get you 57 stone. But right now we only need 32. So you can see we have 32 cobblestone and the next thing we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to upgrade our tools. So go ahead and craft some more sticks because that's what you need for tools as well. You can see when we click on a stone pickaxe, you need two sticks and three cobblestone. So we'll get a stone pickaxe, get a stone ax to chop, to chop trees down with, 
get a stone shovel to dig things with, and eventually we're gonna need to farm some food so we'll get a stone hoe. The very last stone thing we're gonna need, of course, is a stone sword. Otherwise, you're gonna die very quickly without a sword. After you've taken your crafting bench, it's on to step three, shelter. Night is approaching quickly, and unless you can find some sheep, you're gonna need a place to stay. So now will be the time that you will go out and search the general area around you to see if there are any sheep. There is one sheep here, and there are a few sheep over there. You will need three pieces of wool, and go ahead and kill the sheep. I'm so sorry, sheepy, but I need to sleep tonight. Let's get its two friends. Once you've got your three pieces of wool, go ahead and put down your crafting bench, and you can now make a bed. Three pieces of oak planks and three pieces of wool make one white bed. You can dye this other colors, of course. Go ahead, if you want to grab a blue dye, you can dye it blue. If you want to grab a yellow dye, you can dye it yellow. It doesn't matter what color you have. All beds act the same. Now the thing you need to do is you need to right click on your bed. Right clicking on your bed will set your respawn point so that every time you die, you will respawn right here on your bed. Keep in mind, out here in the open is not the best shelter, but we have a bed so we can sleep through the night. Some natural occurrences in Minecraft that make good starting shelters are caves. However, if you get a cave that's too big, you might run into a few monsters. So try and find a cave that's generally small, and if you can't do that, then if you can't find a small cave, your other options for shelter are as follows. You can dig into the side of a mountain or underground and clear out just a little tiny area for you to spend the night in. It doesn't need to be any bigger than probably six blocks, one for the entrance, six for, our to, six for us to use. So go ahead, put that white bed down, set your respawn point, and go ahead, put your crafting table down, and at this time, you can take your cobblestone and craft it into a furnace. If you want to make more than one furnace, that's perfectly okay too. But for right now, I'm just going to make one furnace. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to need a door. Because of course, if you don't have a door, mobs are liable to come straight through into your base and kill you. So right now, this is all we have. And for a starter, that's not too bad. Of course, eventually we're going to need some expansion, so if you want to, go ahead and clear out some more space for some chests. And what you're gonna need is some more wood for that, so grab your stone axe and chop down some more trees. Now that you've got your wood and your shelter, go ahead and craft up two chests from the wood you cut down, and that will form into one large double chest. You can put all your random items in here, and they will be safe until you come back next time. As you can see, night is approaching, the sun is setting, and the moon is rising, and as it gets darker, more hostile mobs will start to spawn. Go in your shelter, close the door, and if you don't have a bed, you're gonna have to wait out the night in here, or use your sword to try and brave it out there. However, we were lucky enough to find some sheep. That means we can lay down and skip the night, and when we get up, it'll be the morning and we can continue on with what we were doing. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to step number four, food. Now you can get food a number of ways. The simplest way is just to go out and find a herd of animals and just kill them for their meat. Chickens, of course, drop chicken. They drop raw chicken. Cows will drop leather and beef. And sheep, as we saw before, will drop raw mutton and wool. And another food source animal is a pig. And a pig will drop a pork chop. Once you've got your meat, go ahead and go back home, put the meat in your furnace, and of course you're gonna need something to cook it with. If you don't have coal already, go ahead and put your remaining oak planks in there. Those should be enough kindling to cook your food. Once you have food to eat, you can refill your hunger bar, and your hunger bar will keep your hearts up, up, up. And that's what we want, because if your hearts aren't up, then you're dead. Here's a pro tip for some starters out there. If you want to keep food on you at all times and still hold other stuff, you can put your food in your offhand up here. That way, when you're not looking at a block, you can continue to eat food and do other stuff. I can break this and I can eat food. I can break this and I can eat food. Now, of course, if you guys don't have any animals nearby you, you can't get any meat, 
there are other options. Other option number one. You can go find any body of water, a river or a ocean, not a lake. Lakes usually don't have them, but oceans and rivers will certainly, certainly have some fish. And you can always kill the fish like this, maybe, if I can actually reach it. They're a little bit hard to hit, but once you hit them, there you go. They drop themselves and you can cook the cod now and you'll be able to eat the fish. So that's an emergency food source if you have that nearby you. But if you don't have that nearby you either, then the very least you can do is mow your lawn. That's right, I said mow your lawn. And what I mean by that is just doing this. And doing that, you can see some seeds have already dropped. Go ahead and pick those seeds up. Farm as much more as you can or as you want. We have three that'll be fine for now. Oh, looks like we got four. So that'll be fine for now. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna start a farm. Since we haven't gone mining it, your first farm will have to be set up near a body of water. Go ahead and farm each block like so. And then you can go ahead and right click to put the wheat seeds on them and you will get an advancement, a seedy place. I like that. All right, and all we gotta do is sit here and wait for these to grow. Now that all this wheat has grown up, go ahead and you can harvest it with just your hand. You don't need to use the hoe and it will drop wheat and some more seeds. So go ahead and replant those seeds and you'll get more wheat in no time. And now with your three pieces of wheat, go ahead and make a piece of bread just like that. Now, of course, if you have more pieces of wheat, you can make more bread, but you only need three pieces of wheat to make one bread. And this is a very good starting food material. But now that we've got our food in place, that brings us on to step number five, mining. So mining is simple. You can find a cave pretty much anywhere and get your stone pickaxe. Go ahead and explore this cave. And uh, if you don't have any coal, you're gonna wanna find some right away. Once you have some coal, make sure you have wood on you so you can craft up sticks. And sticks plus coal equals torches, which equal, ah, that's right, some light. Once things are lit up, monsters will be unable to spawn in the bright areas. If you wanna get technical about it, monsters require a light level below level seven to spawn. Go ahead and mine the resources that you can find. You will need iron. That is the one resource you'll be looking for on your first mining trip. Get, get as much coal as you can. Coal is gonna help you a lot, but you will definitely need iron. Keep in mind, every Minecraft world is different in a multitude of ways. Iron might not be in the first cave you find. You may have to dig down deeper. Sometimes you might not even find a cave at all. If you don't find a cave and you still want to mine, of course you can. All you have to do is dig a staircase. Yes, I said staircase. Dig a staircase down into the earth. And that's super, super simple. So start with one block and you're gonna wanna pretend this is the first step. Go down two blocks, three blocks, four blocks, and so on. And uh, by doing that, you'll be creating steps down. And this is the easiest way to get up and down. And it does have a term, it's called branch mining or strip mining. Now, if you're really into Minecraft and you want to start playing like the pros that you see on YouTube, you can do this one trick. If you don't know about it, go ahead and look at your keyboard for a second and press the F3 key. The F3 key will bring up the information screen. Now you can see a bunch of things on this screen that I'm not gonna go through right now, but what we're gonna be focusing on is over here, right here, this XYZ area right here. So this number 108 is the X coordinate, 44 is the Y coordinate, and 307 is the Z coordinate. X and Z are directions like north and south would be on the X and east and west would be on the Z. The Y coordinate is up and down. So Y level 44 right now is what we're at. And we keep doing, going down one level like so. And the best level to be at is Y level 11. Y level 11 is where lava starts. There's an old Minecraft expression that goes, if there's lava, there's diamonds. Y level 11 is the level that most Minecraft YouTubers go diamond hunting on. If you want to find a lot of diamonds quick, go down to Y level 11. But if you've been strip mining for a little bit or just been mining, you'll find some iron. Go ahead and mine that iron with the stone pickaxe. 
Here's a warning, a wood pickaxe will not break iron. It has to be a stone pickaxe. If you're worried about conserving time and getting your Minecraft world up and running very fast, then what you need to do is mine only three pieces of iron. So back at our base, after we've mined our three iron ore that we'll need, uh, we're gonna smelt it up and we can replace these oak planks with coal because now that we have coal, we won't need to use wood as kindling anymore. After a while, go ahead, look in your furnace and your iron should be done smelting. Take that iron and grab two sticks and with those two sticks and iron, go ahead and make an iron pickaxe. An iron pickaxe is the only pickaxe that can mine diamond other than a diamond pickaxe. Don't try to mine diamond with a stone pickaxe. Okay, so once you've gotten your iron pickaxe, go ahead and go back down into your mine and you'll be able not only to mine a lot faster, but a lot easier too. Since you don't have a stone pickaxe anymore, you can finally mine diamond ore into diamond. Now it will take some digging to get to diamond ore, but that shouldn't be a problem. All right, I've turned my F3 back on and I'm down here at Y level 11, all the way down in the bottom of the world. And let's turn F3 off. And now that you're down at Y level 11, go ahead and just mine straight. This is the most commonly used method for finding diamonds. And if it works for the pros, it certainly works for me. Now this will happen sometimes that you'll find that lava just spills in to your strip mine. Uh, be very careful of that, lava's very tricky. But if you get hit by lava, that's not a problem. Go ahead and block that entrance off and just pick a different direction to start mining. Two pickaxes and one successful mining session later, I've gotten myself quite the loot. Uh, not that much coal, I didn't mine coal because I didn't want to. So this is about what you can expect from your first mining session. I got 44 iron ore, about a stack of redstone dust, and I got actually six diamonds, which is perfect because we need three diamonds for a diamond pickaxe to mine some obsidian. We need two diamonds for an enchantment table, and it never hurts to have an extra diamond. So go ahead, get your double stick, take your three diamonds, and you can craft up a very own diamond pickaxe. That's right, we're only on step five, and we already have a diamond pickaxe, which is part of the- So stick with me guys, we only got a little bit to go. Now that you've mined things, you're gonna need somewhere to store all this stuff, aren't you? Now storage in Minecraft is a very tricky thing. Since you keep gaining resources, you eventually run out of storage space and you need to have a place where you can expand your storage pretty much exponentially. But that stuff will come further down the line. For your basic storage needs, starting out, you won't need much. But if you're planning on keeping it in your base, you will need to expand your base just a little bit more. Oh, it looks like we've hit a cave. Okay, our base has now been expanded for extra storage. So you normally probably won't need this amount, but if you don't want to expand your storage anytime soon, I crafted up 16 chests. Now this will get you eight double chests, but I think that's a worthwhile number to have. So this is the storage system that you should have right about now. And it doesn't have to look exactly like this, of course. And I put my bed in the middle here just because I like the design of it. You will need to have one chest like this that's separate from all the others because you will need a chest to put all your tools in so that when you wake up and you go down to go outside, you put your tool chest by your door so you can grab your tools and you can just go. All right, guys, that's step six all finished. That means we're done and you guys are now ready to start your world like Minecraft pros. If you guys found this helpful, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I post a lot of Minecraft tutorial videos that you can use in your new world. I even play a world of my own, so if you want to, go check out my Let's Play. You can get inspired from that. Otherwise, I'm Kyle Lemon. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.